CataractCoach.com. Two cases of fixing Zyler defects. This can be due to weak tissues or it can be iatrogenic. Regardless, we've got to fix it. Now, the first case here, look at that. Pseudoxfoliation syndrome, right? A lot of pseudoxfoliation material there. Good dilation. Here's the end of the case. Everything seemed routine and normal. Bag full of viscoelastic. Here comes the eye well going in the capsular bag here. That looks all good. And again, during the cataract surgery, the nucleus removal and cortex removal, everything looked fine. So now all you got to do is take out the viscoelastic. You call this done, right? Hey, 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 not so easy. Watch carefully. By manual IA going inside the eye, and you try to tilt the lens a little bit to get out all the viscoelastic, and whoa, 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 what is that? What is that? That's the edge of the rexus. So now you've got probably three clock guys of Zion or lost there, and that was just from tilting the lens against the posterior capsule because the Zion or weakness that was there pre-existing, right, for the pseudoxfoliation. So now the surgeon's going in with some viscoelastic, smart move here, especially to lift up that rexus edge, and you know what's going to go in next is a capsule tension ring. You definitely need to know how to place a CTR. And so here, more viscoelastic to fill the bag. Get the CTR ready. We're going to place this CTR inside the eye here. And so when we place these CTRs, I like to get the leading eyelet of the CTR with the Sinsky hook and help guide it in. And that's why I like these always to the left because my para is going to be on the left. But here you go. Place the CTR in the capsule bag nice and easy. Make sure it goes around without too much Additional Zyler stress, there it is. And now look, you don't have that D shape anymore. Now the rexus is back to normal. So it's bolstered that three clock guard Zyler weakness. Now we're going inside the eye here. Be very cautious. Take out the viscoelastic. I wouldn't touch the lens at all. Don't do any further manipulation. Now if you need to, a little bit is okay, but I'd be very cautious. Better to just call it good and be done with the case. Again, going in nice and easy. Take out the viscoelastic and we'll be done with this case. Now, did I tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel? It is amazing. You will learn so much. Even if you're a cataract surgeon like me, I promise there's so much to be learned on retinarounds.com. Please check it out and subscribe. It's on YouTube plus, of course, retinarounds.com itself. Now, sealing up the case here at the end, it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to show you another case from our same surgeon. By the way, very talented surgeon. To show your issues with dealing with zonal weakness is very impressive. Now, Taking out the lens here looks all pretty routine. Nucleus comes out pretty easily. And now going inside, let's see, we've got a spatula in one hand. For that last little piece, good. Again, seems like a pretty routine case. Let's see the cortex removal now. So going in now, where the cortex removal, probably a bimanual IA setup is going to be my guess here. Just like the first case was. And when doing this, you've got to be very careful. In fact, you can strip away the zonules just with the suction of the bimanual IA, right? So here you go. Aspirators in the left hand, infusion in the right, taking out the lens material, very nicely done. Coming out very well. Looks like the rex is, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. got to be careful there. I look at the rexus edge as we do this to make sure it doesn't move. So switching over, letting go of that capsule, right? Now coming back in, now you may have some existing weakness here, so be cautious getting that out. And as you try to get the cortex, if it's very adherent, don't pull too much. Let the vacuum go. Oh, that's a lot of pulling. So now you've got probably four or five clock guards of line of loss. So stabilize it with viscoelastic. I like that idea. Very, very good job. Get that viscoelastic again. Push that bag back out. Don't worry about any little bit of cortex at this point. Now, the question is, is a single CTR going to be enough to stabilize this? Maybe. I know it's certainly at six clock hours or more, you need more than just a CTR. Three clock hours, like the previous case we showed you, a CTR is plenty. But will you have to do something else? Now, you can do a stepwise approach. Place a CTR on the eye, put the eye well, and see if it's stable enough. Here comes the CTR now. And so getting that going around nice and easy. Again, I do it a little differently with a Sinsky hook, trying to guide the leading uh, eyelid, but whatever system you like is fine. There it is. It's in the bag. Now you can put the lens in. You can see, is it stable enough? Now you may have to put in a capital tension segment and then suture that into position as well, suture that to the sclera, depending on how much stability you have here. So now the lens in the capsule bag going inside, gently removing the viscoelastic here. I'd be very cautious. Okay to leave a little viscoelastic in the eye to give the patient some diamox in the post-op period. I'd be super, super cautious here. And hopefully you'll be able to get out of this case without doing too much more. If you need to, again, you could put an Ahmed segment 
a capture attention segment and suture that into position, and that can be helpful there. Ooh, they're just going behind the optic for that one last piece. Again, let's see the stability here. What do you think? Does it look stable enough to you? It looks pretty good, actually. Pretty good. So let's seal the incision and see. In a case like this, you may want to shake the eye up a little bit just to judge if there's any pseudophacodenesis. But hey, oh, it looks pretty good. Remember, check out retinarounds.com, our sister channel. So much great material. You will absolutely love it.